Dementia is a general term for any brain disease that causes a long-term and often gradual decrease in mental ability. Dementia is commonly attributed to Alzheimer's disease, but recent research suggests there is a new and underdiagnosed type of dementia called vascular dementia. Vascular dementia, or vascular cognitive impairment, is a huge and growing problem, affecting nearly everyone by the age of 70. Vascular dementia is the result of small blood vessels deep within the brain weakening with old age. The breaking down of these tiny arteries is called small vessel disease. This breaking down of microvasculature is associated with poor blood pressure, but aging itself has been shown to weaken these blood vessels. There are two major pathological factors that contribute to small vessel disease. The first is the loss of an elastic protein called elastin. Elastin is located within the walls of conducting arteries, such as the internal carotid arteries. These large arteries stretch in response to each pulse and help maintain a relatively constant blood pressure. But as elastin weakens with old age, the pressure becomes less regular. The second factor is a buildup of a protein called fibrin within the walls of small blood vessels in the brain. Fibrin is normally involved in the clotting of blood, but this substance builds up in the arteries as we age, leading to poor blood flow to the white matter deep within the brain. Let's take a closer look at the relevant anatomy and the specific pathological mechanisms that lead to vascular dementia. Blood reaches the brain by two major sets of arteries, the internal carotid arteries and the vertebral arteries. The internal carotid artery is composed of three layers. The outermost layer, the tunica adventitia, the tunica media, and the innermost layer, the tunica intima. The tunica media is a thick muscular layer made up of smooth muscle cells and elastin filaments. Elastin, as mentioned earlier, assists in keeping a relatively constant pressure within the artery despite the pulsating nature of the blood flow. After the age of 60, these fibrin filaments become weak and less responsive to pulsation, resulting in irregular blood pressure and contributing to the breaking down of the brain's microvascular systems. The vertebral arteries merge anterior to the brainstem and form the basilar artery. The basilar artery then branches laterally, giving rise to the posterior cerebral arteries. These arteries form an important anastomosis or connection with the internal carotids. This connection is called the circle of Willis. At this connecting point, the internal carotids branch upward and laterally, becoming the middle cerebral arteries. And finally, two arteries branch superiorly from the middle cerebral arteries, forming the anterior cerebral arteries. These are all the primary arterial branches responsible for providing blood flow to the brain. Within the brain is a complex network of tiny vascular systems all working together to perfuse the deep brain. The main arteries responsible for this perfusion are the peel arteries, which dive deep into the brain from the superior division of the middle cerebral artery, the subependymal arteries arising from the lateral ventricles, which are branches from the choroidal arteries. 
and finally the lenticulostriate arteries, which arise from the M1 segment of the middle cerebral arteries. Each of these groups of microvessels perfuse different sections of the white matter. There is a small area of white matter that depends on blood flow from each of these systems. This section of overlap is known as the subcortical watershed area. Since this area relies on all these arteries for blood supply, small vessel disease makes it extremely susceptible to ischemia. Small vessel disease is very common in people over the age of 60. Around this time, these small vessels can become distended and weakened. Additionally, fibrin, a fibrous non-globular protein normally involved in the clotting of blood, begins to accumulate within the endothelium of these vessels. The buildup of fibrin dramatically narrows the lumen obstructing the flow of red blood cells and depriving the white matter tissue of much needed oxygen. This results in ischemia. Consequently, the tissue loses density and develops large white matter lesions. Slowly, over time, more small vessels break down, causing chronic ischemia and the subsequent spread of more white matter lesions. This white matter damage is dramatic enough to be visible on radiographs such as MRI scans. This is how vascular cognitive impairment is typically diagnosed. Within the white matter lesions, the neurons become demyelinated, leading to a loss of the cognitive ability that is associated with vascular dementia. There are currently no known cures for vascular dementia. But it has recently been discovered that making simple lifestyle changes may help prevent it. There is a large body of evidence suggesting that physical exercise can dramatically reduce the risk of cognitive decline. New studies have found that drinking beetroot juice will also dramatically decrease the likelihood of developing vascular cognitive impairment. Beets are high in nitric oxide, which has been shown to improve blood flow and lower blood pressure, thus potentially preventing the breakdown of the smaller blood vessels in the brain. Lastly, a new therapeutic strategy is being developed called remote ischemic conditioning. This approach strengthens an organ over time, such as the brain, by inducing brief cycles of non-lethal ischemia. Since older patients are less willing or less able to exercise, this may be a good alternative. It works by using a blood pressure cuff to temporarily restrict blood flow to an appendage repeatedly for a few minutes each day, which increases blood flow to other areas of the body, including the brain. The increased blood flow activates a series of natural protective mechanisms. So later on, when potentially lethal ischemia develops, the damage to the tissue is not as severe. This device is currently being tested in clinical trials, but will be available to patients in the coming years.